Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nick, the NDC Chief here, and in this video we're going to talk all things Apple Watch and Pebble Time, and I'm going to let you know which one's going to end up on my wrist this summer. Let's get started. So first things first, with the Apple Watch, obviously the big conference was about a week and a half ago, and the media has had enough time to digest, look at it, compare it to other Android Wear, Pebbles, whatever's on the market at the moment. Fun fact with that, as the Apple conference started, the Pebble Time Kickstarter started making about $6,000 an hour. Started at the end of February, so you know it's had time to develop. $6,000 an hour at the start of the conference. Once the conference started, $10,000 an hour. Day after, $16,000 per hour on that Pebble Time Kickstarter. So thanks to the Apple Watch conference, Pebble actually started making more money for the watch that they're set to release in early May. With the Apple Watch, we're gonna see about an 18 hour battery life. Pebble, you're gonna see seven to 10 days, depending on it's gonna be the Pebble Time or the Pebble Steel. So in battery life, you obviously are gonna see the steel and the time beat it out. With the Apple Watch, though, you're gonna have much more connectivity and availability with your Apple iPhone. Apps are gonna be tailored specifically between your iPhone and the watch to work flawlessly. Whereas with the Pebble, you're gonna have connectivity for your Android device, for your Apple, everything like that. So it's gonna be tailored toward the watch and not directly to the phone. So your Apple Watch is going to be available to be used a lot simpler and a lot quicker and easier with your iPhone. The first day of the Pebble Time Kickstarter, I was in backer within the first 20 minutes. It opened up at nine o'clock central time for me here in Chicago. The pledge was 159 bucks. There were only 5,000 of them. And that was available for me to be able to pre-order it. The retail price is going to be 199 and it's going to be shipping in early May. So I'll have the watch at some point mid May. Apple watch on the other hand, pre-orders are not available yet. The pre-order is supposed to launch next week at the end of March. There's actually going to be times in Apple stores. You're gonna to have to reserve to play or review or whatever you want to do with your Apple watch. You're gonna have a specific Apple genius come up and greet you and be like, hi, my name is Jim. I'm going to stand over your shoulder and teach you how to use that $500 watch. You have exactly 15 minutes to play around, decide which one you want. There's going to be Apple watch specialist as well to explain to the more high class customers about the Apple watch edition. You know, that $17,000 watch that Apple Rolex, if you will. So you're gonna have that opportunity as pre-order pre starts. The pre-orders start and then the Apple Watch cases will be available in just about every Apple store across the United States. And then two weeks from that, the pre-orders will stop and you'll have your chance to actually just walk in, throw your $400 on a table and say, I want that one. As I'm sure you know by the now, the Apple Watch will come in three different variations. The Sport, which starts at 350, the Apple Watch would start at 500, and the Apple Watch Edition, which starts at 10,000, all the way up to 17,000 if you max it out with the gold and the biggest band possible. In terms of affordability, you're going to have the Pebble leaps and bounds doing better in terms of the price point because you have $199 is what the time is going to retail for and then $299 for the steel. The biggest difference between the two, instead of like the regular Pebble like we saw two years ago in 2012, instead of going from plastic to steel and being the only difference, this time we're actually seeing a larger battery and a better display between the time and the time steel. It's going to be better glass on there so it's going to be a little more scratch resistant and things like that. The biggest difference which separates the Pebble from any smartwatch that's going to be out on the market this year, next year, whatever it may be, something that they're bringing totally to the table is their term, the smart strap. They're opening up the SDK and everything to the developers to make a strap that's easily interchangeable between the watch where you can give it a heart rate sensor, GPS. There's been a whole slew of different ideas. Even companies like Buick and things like that are making it so it'd be a keyless remote as an entry for your car. Instead of having the fob, you have the watch to get in and out of your car. Pebble is so dedicated to the idea of a smart strap that they're taking some of the money from the Kickstarter, which is at the 19.6 million at this moment on March 20th. They only wanted 500,000, side note. Anyway, they're taking 1 million at the moment right now from that to developers to back their ideas for which smart strap they like the best and which prototypes they think will work out the best for their customers. Obviously heart rate because of the fitness sensation is a big thing right now. So you can swap it out, go from your nice classy steel band to more metallic and a rubber one. So you can have your heart rate, everything like that. GPS, gyroscope, all that fun stuff with the smart strap. Instead of having to tinker like I had to with my Pebble Steel and take the screwdriver and spend about an hour taking out links with my tiny little uh, T-Rex wrist. Now it'll be a 10 second switch out. There's just an easy unlock pin on the inside of the watch. Strap will come out. You can click the other one in, close the pin. And they say in under 30 seconds, you can switch out those different straps. Apple Watch, you're just going to have what Pebble kind of did where you have, you know, your silicone one, your steel one, gold, clasps, leather, whatever it may be, just simple style switches out instead of the whole smart strap sensation. Between the two, there's going to be the Pebble time for everyone who has Android or Apple. So that's going to be the connectivity availability between that. And then obviously the Apple Watch is designed for your iPhone. Giving Pebble the bigger chance and the bigger developers and more people are going to be using it because obviously having two platforms to use it from is going to be a big advantage for them. 
with the Apple Watch instead of having the Android world. It's only going to have the Apple world there. But as we know, just about everyone walking around has an iPhone in their pocket, so they'll have no problem selling it. At the end of the day, what's going to end up on my wrist? Personally, I'm going to go with the Pebble Time just simply because there's a Pebble on my wrist right now. I love the functionality of it. My biggest complaint with my steel was that I had no possible way to respond to a notification. With the Pebble Time, they're adding in a microphone so I can simply say reply. Say my reply, it'll send it just by itself. There's no added fee to add it to like my monthly bill. It doesn't have its own internet signal, anything like that. It just feeds off of my phone. Similar to the Apple Watch, isn't gonna have its own cellular data plan or anything like that. But still, the Pebble Time will be cheaper, have a better battery life. It's not gonna be touchscreen, so I do lose something out there. But it's still gonna have a ton of apps that are specifically dedicated. And it's going to be much more enjoyable for me as a user. It's going to take care of my interests. I'm not a big fitness buff. So all the different, you know, test your levels, all the different things that Apple did, their whole press kit, where you could use it to measure for Parkinson's, things like that. Wonderful applications, wonderful things in their Apple Health Kit that are incredible, making great strides for science, are obviously aren't going to be part of the Pebble. But nonetheless, I don't really focus too much on that health stuff. It's just something for me to glance at on my wrist while I'm in class. Somewhere I, it's not okay for me to take out my phone or if I'm too lazy to, I can just look at my wrist, know who texted me, know who called, emails, things like that. And just that ease of use is going to lead me down the Pebble Time Road. All right, guys, this is Nick, the NDC Chief. Make sure you like and subscribe down below for more Apple Watch and Pebble Time coverage. Obviously, when I get my Pebble in the mail, you're going to have a ton of videos blowing up your inbox, the unboxing, the review, the comparison between my steel and the time. And of course, I'll probably take a trip to an Apple store and bring a camera with just to see how my experience is going to be with an Apple Watch just to get an actual feel for it. All right, guys, you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon.